Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off asking a very simple question. What is Microsoft's Keystone? This is a project name that seems to be associated with Xbox. And it was posted a few days ago now on Twitter by the username Tiro Alenin. Hopefully I've pronounced that correctly. Now, this seems to be indicating a future Xbox project and the internet has since been ablaze with a ton of different theories. If you've been a long time Xbox or console fan, you may remember other code names, for example, Durango, or uh, various other ones, which obviously Microsoft have utilized for various consoles in its past. And project code names are nothing new, not only in, of course, Microsoft's history, but Sony, Nintendo, and so on and so on. So this begs the question, what is this actually pertaining to? Is it a console or is it something that's not that interesting? Maybe, for example, it could be a dongle for a streaming xCloud, which is still cool, but not as cool as, let's say, a mid-generation refresh of the Xbox hardware. So there are a ton of theories, again, that have been swirling around the internet for this. And I can only give you information based upon what I've personally been hearing. Now, I want to stress that this could be absolutely a nothing burger because projects themselves have code names associated with them and then they're just canceled. It doesn't go very far at all. And this is particularly true when you start to look at the fact that Microsoft, Sony, and all of these companies have various projects and different directions that they go in. A really famous example of this actually was the Dreamcast back in the day, where uh, Sega actually had multiple different designs of the Dreamcast, and they basically were using completely different hardware vendors essentially to create the Dreamcast, and each of those had different code names associated with them. And obviously the Dreamcast that we know and possibly love, depending on what age you are, was the one that we know now, but if history had been just a little bit different, we could have had entirely different specifications from entirely different vendors, including the now defunct 3D FX. So let's talk about the mid-generation refresh first. I think we can all agree that it's highly likely that Microsoft are not going to be getting out of the hardware business anytime soon. In fact, just recently, well, they've actually been selling gangbusters with Xbox hardware. The Xbox Series S and Series X have actually outsold the PlayStation 5. Now, this is kind of difficult to quantify because honestly, well, let's just face it, hardware across the board has been just facing absolutely monstrous shortages. So we don't know how things would have shook up if uh, Sony, as well as Microsoft, to be fair, hadn't been experiencing these issues. But it's fair to say that either way, the Xbox Series systems have been received much better than the Xbox One. And I think that the Xbox Series S, despite the fact that you can argue that lower specifications have hurt, perhaps some levels of public image, have definitely also helped Microsoft tap into an entirely new fan base because the system is so cheap, relatively anyway, to either the PS5 or, of course, the Xbox Series X. Personally, I have heard, and I've recently covered the fact that the PlayStation 5 Pro, I'm almost certain, is real. And in that video, which I released kind of recently, I was told that Microsoft are currently investigating multiple different projects, and they're basically deciding which direction to go for a follow-up system. Now, I believe, and this is this is based upon what I've been told now from multiple different people, that the PlayStation 5 Pro will probably launch first, and then afterwards we will see whatever the Series' Pro system is going to be called. I'm just going to call it the Series Pro for the sake of this video. But there's also something a little more interesting, which we'll get into in just a moment, because I think it's very important to talk about the other obvious thing, and that would be some type of streaming hardware. This, of course, would plonk into your TV and stream something like xCloud. And honestly, that market is absolutely massive. And I think we can all agree that streaming games is something that Microsoft have been pushing heavily, along with things like Game Pass. And if you think about it from a logistical perspective, not only is it an area that's quite easy, quote-unquote, to kind of market to, but 
you know, it's it's a huge revenue growth opportunity for Microsoft because obviously you don't need the hardware infrastructure so profound. And there have been a ton of rumors of Microsoft pushing a hardware-based stick, which would basically be pretty cheap and, of course, have just enough grunt, just enough horsepower to allow you to, uh, well, stream games because obviously all of the processing essentially is done on Microsoft's own hardware and then obviously that's beamed over to you and we've also seen this really being used quite well as well for something like uh nvidia's geforce now um i actually have a press account for the geforce now um service and i have to say the rtx 3080 tier from nvidia is just ridiculously good their service does have some drawbacks most notably some developers and publishers don't let you play their games on the service, but overall, it's pretty stellar. And uh, especially with all the GPU shortages that have been affecting PC gamers, it's pretty cool. But there is also another possibility. And I have personally been hearing that Microsoft could be working on a handheld. Now, I know what people are gonna say, what the hell, seriously, um, yeah. Uh, I don't want to go too much into it in this specific video because I'm actually working on a much longer video. In fact, the only reason I'm not even covering this at all is because I've had multiple people DM me on Twitter and I've been not super active on Twitter for those who are not regular viewers. It's actually my birthday at the moment, hence the fact that it's audio only as I'm not actually at home. Um, but yeah, I have heard that Microsoft are working on a portable system. Although I'm honestly not sure whether it's going to ever be released. The way I heard it is it was possibly going to be cancelled, but the device apparently was something that Microsoft were working on internally, and they're not the only ones, because I'm also hearing Sony are doing the same. Now, I do have some more details regarding this, but um, again, I'm working on like an entire script with a whole bunch of stuff, and I didn't want to just kind of throw something together for this video as I didn't really think it was fair to you guys. You know, I'd rather put actually some work in and kind of give the details more, well, with an actual script rather than me just kind of doing this off the cuff. But um, yeah, I am hearing that Sony are working on a portable PlayStation as well. And it's possibly even going to work alongside the PlayStation VR 2. Um, which would be an interesting one. And while you can say, well, the PlayStation Vita wasn't exactly selling gangbusters, like it wasn't as successful as, let's say, the Xbox 360 or certainly, you know, the PlayStation 2 or whatever, this is true. However, if you look at the software attach rate of the PlayStation Vita, you can just Google uh, Vita attach rate or something like that and it'll pop up. You can see that the attach rate was really good. I've I think from memory, it was like 10 to, I think the software attach rate was something like 10 or something like that, which is actually pretty good. And I think as well, given the fact that obviously we've seen the Steam Deck just doing tremendously, although obviously Microsoft wouldn't have just suddenly created this project in the last like couple of weeks based upon the Steam Deck success, but they would know that it's selling well. But furthermore, you know, you can do a really good analysis of the hardware of the Xbox systems. And you can kind of, you know, it wouldn't be difficult on hardware that's coming out, not now, but let's say 2024, to have a device which is really quite capable and not that far away from, let's say an Xbox One X or an Xbox Series S. And you may say, well, that's not really possible. But seriously, look at the TFLOP performance, for example, of the Series S. Look at the CPU performance. The biggest issue you're going to have is shrinking that sucker down and being able to power it with, well, you know, a battery, like a small form factor. And I don't think, you know, given the fact that we're already moving on to TSMC's 5 and M process this year, and it's going to be on 3NM, you know, not too long into the future, I think it's quite possible. Um... We've also got TSMC 4NM as well, which is kind of like an enhanced version of uh, 5NM, which, yeah, basically speaking, I think Microsoft have a crap ton of opportunity uh, here, as does Sony. And we know, of course, that the Switch Pro has also possibly been cancelled entirely. 
Um, with the recent NVIDIA hack, it actually confirmed what I leaked, you know, quite a while ago, that the Switch Pro is real. Um, again, one of my sources basically, well, actually I had multiple sources tell me that Nintendo were working on a Switch Pro, which was essentially utilizing NVIDIA's DLSS technology, but then nothing happened. Basically, the development hardware seemed to have just been taken away from internal developers at Nintendo. And that's what I was told. And from this NVIDIA hack, it seems to be true, at least the part of uh, NVIDIA offering a Nintendo DLSS-based hardware. It seems to be based upon uh, Ampere. But one other small uh, thing I wanted to cover, because again, I've got a couple of people messaging me about this. Grayman on Twitter was, well, tweeting things. As you probably know, Grayman has been pretty infamous with Narve and, well, AMD, as well as NVIDIA leaks, actually. And they've been tweeting about Narve 33 pertaining to its clock speed, performance, and also um, ray tracing performance. So I had a couple of people ask me, is this probably true regarding, you know, the performance, but also the ray tracing side of things? And, you know, there's a really interesting patent that has actually kind of been filed by Sony recently, which shows ray tracing, but it seems to be an evolved version that we see in the uh, Narve 2X. Now, whether that IP is what AMD are utilizing for RDNA 3, I don't know. But if it is, honestly, you know, Grayman's saying that we're probably going to be seeing about a 50% increase for RDNA 3. And I kind of, I, I personally think 50% on a like-for-like -like basis over RDNA 2 is probably, a, you know, on the conservative side to maybe 75%. So, you know, one and a half to 1.7 times faster is probably what I'm personally expecting. It could be faster, but yeah. Um, until we actually know more, I, I, I would like to see an AMD patent of the ray tracing uh, upgrades that, you know, they've cobbled together. But to my understanding anyway, the patent that we're basically seeing from Sony, it kind of offers you roughly the same you know, kind of abilities as NVIDIA currently offer with RTX 20-ish. And um, I've also heard still that NVIDIA are going to have the advantage when it comes to ray tracing performance. And again, given the fact that AMD are going to have the raster performance advantage and also performance per watt advantage over RTX 40, logically speaking to me anyway, it's probable that AMD are still going to be behind in ray tracing, but they're going to also be absolutely kicking butt when it comes to raster performance and also performance per watt. And how much PPW matters to you is, well, yeah. <laughs> it's really a personal thing. With that said, though, thank you very much for checking out the video. I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves and have an amazing day. Bye for now.